Hi, this is Denise Matthew. I hope you're doing well. I'm here today to talk about the overall view of the transits that we can look out for for 2023. We also have Neptune staying in the gate 36, and it's going to be going through all the different lines. So it'll go from line one right to the line six. So it's giving us the full theme of what Neptune means in the gate 36. And with Neptune in the gate 36, we know that it's connected to experiences. But Neptune is notorious for being very veiled and not really telling us what we need to know. It's only at certain times in the year that it will give us an inside view and show us where we're going, what we're learning and how things are going to play out. So the most important part is, as I said last year in 2022, is this idea of holding your experiences loosely and realizing that what you expect may not be what you get and being okay with that, understanding that that is the energy of experiential energy and that we never really know if you look at logic and abstract energy and you see that logic is a pattern and you sort of run a program and you think, okay, well, this is what's going to happen. If I do this, I will get this, but that is not abstract energy. With abstract energy, you just jump into the deep end a lot of times and you get what you get and you always will get an experience. What you take from that experience is, is fully up to you, but we will have opportunities to experience life. We'll have opportunities to have new experiences that we need to make us stronger. So with that said, let's get into the details. So we begin the year with Neptune in the gate 36 line one. So we're going to run the full gamut for all the lines of the gate 36 for 2023. So we are evolving from the line one right to the line six. So if we look at the first line of the gate 36 line one is called resistance. And again, we're getting to the same idea of building a foundation, finding out what energy we need, what experiences we need to move us forward. That's what the gate 36 is really talking about because it is called chaos or crisis, but the crisis comes from the idea that we are going into a new experience and every new experience that we go into, if we don't have any intel or ideas of how it's going to play out or we don't have the experience to actually fall back on, it is going to be a little chaotic. It is going to be a little off in that we are not used to anything because if you, the first time you ever drove a car, for instance, if you drive a car, you get in the car, you might have looked at other people doing it, watched something about people doing it, but until you're behind the wheel, you're trying to drive, it doesn't really show you where your inexperience is or where you need to improve. And that is what the Gate 36 Line 1 really talked about. It also talked about the idea that change is necessary in your life, but maybe you didn't really want to change. Maybe you thought, oh, the status quo is better than anything that's a little scary in experience, something I'm not experienced with. I would rather just stay where I'm at. I am and not actually go somewhere else. But the gate 36 said, no, you are going to go somewhere else. You are going to get some new experience, whether you like it or not. And that's what Neptune was really telling us. But the other thing that Neptune is bringing in is this idea that it's not really showing you what you need until you're kind of thrown into the deep end and then you've got to figure it out. And that's kind of why it is a little bit of this idea of being veiled until the illumination comes. But having said that, there's a lot of experience that we can get from Neptune being in the gate 36 and really showing us what we need to get so that we can have a better experience in life. And the experiences that come through the gate 36 are usually a one and done. It doesn't mean you have to keep doing the same thing over and again. I talked about the car, but that could be almost the first experience is your experiential energy or abstract. And then when you continue to drive and do it over and over and again, then that becomes sort of a logical energy where you're doing the pattern of what it feels like to drive. But experience as itself from the gate 36 is a one energy where it comes in it's hot and it kind of burns out as soon as it's done by the end of january we're moving into the gate 36 line two and we'll have that energy for the full month of february and so the month of february will be all about the gate 36 line two and this is about a talent for crisis or chaos or even getting the right call to the experience that you need to move you forward in life what will advance you in life or what experiences do you need that will fulfill you all, almost because you know that's what our lives are about that's what being human is about that is the difference between 
being an animal and being human is that humans actively go out and look for experiences where animals are just happy to do you know the survival thing we as humans need to have some new and exciting things to make us feel as though we truly are living our lives on purpose so now we get into this level of an experience that we're in and it's it's a little bit scary and we may not know what we're doing but this is saying right now we're going to give you the help you need to make it through this crisis or to make it through this chaos that you are going through. The key phrase for this is assistance to others in times of decline or assistance in times of decline. And that means that you're getting the help that you need when things are not going as you want them to go. Neptune is exalted in the gate 36 line two. So that is probably the energy we're going to get, which means we are getting the help and assistance that we need when things are not getting a little bit out of control and we have something or someone that comes in and helps us to move forward, to get the experience that we need, but also to have the assistance to get through the trials of it and to move forward. The key with any experiential energy, especially the gate 36, is to go through the energy and to continue with the experience until you have the end of it. Because what happens with abstract energy is if you don't continue on, then you'll always wonder what it could have been had you continued to move forward. And that can bring regret and a what if and what would have happened had I done that kind of energy. Because we always know that any abstract energy has a cyclical nature, which means there's a beginning, a middle and an ending. And unless you go through all parts of that cycle, it can be problematic in that there's always that kind of voice in your head that says, what could have been? If I had have written that whole book, what would have happened? Could that have been a bestseller? Could it have been something that made my life different? By March, we move into the gate 36, line three, and this is called transition. We could say the energy of the gate 36 has a similar theme to the third line in general. So when we get to the 36 line three, we get even more experimentation and discovering what experience is really meant for you. Where do you really need to put your energy in life? And this is about life. So this is really kind of experimenting where you're putting your energy, your personal energy as you move forward in your life. This is also, you could say a turning point where you start to be looking at what you've been doing your whole life, all the things that you've been doing, even up until this moment, and you start to see that things are not working out the way you want them to. And you start to decide that you want to shift. Something in your life is important enough to change a trajectory because you know that where you're going right now is not going to lead you to where you want to go. So we could say it's the end of the road, there's no going back, and it's really about how you move with the flow of life. You can push against the flow of life and say you're not going to go the way that the universe is directing you or sort of guiding you, but we know that change always comes no matter if we decide it's going to come or not. That is the impermanence of life. But the caveat is, is that for some true change to happen in your life, we usually have to let go of something so that we can move forward. It's, it's if you have a renovation in your house and you put all the same old things in your house again, but you just put it in a different way, it's not going to really be changing much about your house. A renovation of a house most times means that you have to bring a lot of new things into your house and eventually it gets messy before it gets beautiful. And that's kind of how this can be. It can be messy before you really see the benefits of the changes that you're bringing into your life. And then we get into a really interesting line and this happens sort of the end of March and for about three quarters of April, we will have this energy in play. And it's the gate 36 line four. This is called espionage. And this is a really interesting energy in that it is a time when if you are open and aware, you might get information that can give you a heads up or an added advantage to move you forward. This is inside information that not everybody has. And if we remember that the fourth line is really about our social groups or the people that we hang out then with, then that's where you may get this information from. It may come from something innocent that somebody says, but it suddenly kind of rings a bell inside of you and you realize that this is important information. It could be even information that you need to start to move in the direction that you want to, to shift your trajectory because you've already seen with the gate 36 line three that change is necessary. And this is potentially giving you the information 
information that you need so that you can make the change that you do want to make. And the type of information that you can get can be esoteric, it can be spiritual, it can be of the mundane world, it can be of any kind, but it in some way is assisting you forward. So be aware as much as you can be when this energy starts to move in. And as you can see, I have all the dates for when the lines will be activated on the screen here. So that way you can use it for a guide. So you'll know exactly when the energy is going to shift up. And April 20th, we get into the gate 36 line five. And this is where we are at the exemplification or the exalted version of the gate 36, where we see exactly what it means. And now that means that this is a time where chaos and crisis might show up in the world. And that's not to scare anybody because when we see these type of energy, we know that this is a place where we need experience or we need to find out what we need to find out. So going forward, we can change it and shift it so that we can get a better perspective or something better in the long run after we have decided what we need to shift and change. And the thing about this is that when we get to the fifth line, just like we did when we hit the fifth line of Pluto with the gate 60 line five, it's that we have this kind of resilience that we've built up as we've moved through the energy. And now we can see crisis and chaos and not get stressed out and think that the world is coming to an end. We can see that there is something of value in everything that's happening in the world and that these things that pop up or these little fires that pop up around the world, they're important for us to know that this is going to change something going forward. With Neptune in the gate 36, this could be related to diseases or things that kind of present themselves in a way that we haven't seen them present them, themselves before. This could be related to sexuality as well. People are, that are doing things behind closed doors that might come to the forefront that we may see what they're doing. It could be hidden clubs or hidden things that we've never seen before and suddenly Neptune when it feels like it can show the world what's happening behind closed doors. And when it does, if something needs to be changed, then that's when we see it and we can start to make constructive changes in the world that we want to see going forward. And then finally, we'll get to in May 24th, 2023, we get to Neptune in the gate 36 line six. And this is where Neptune's already looking to the gate 25 that we're going to be hitting in 2024 and saying, okay, what is the combination of this energy? What kind of experiences do I need so that I can evolve my spirit, spiritual self in some way? Because we know that the gate 25 is the love of spirit and it is this idea of universal love where we see that everybody is part of the universal theme of, of existence and everybody is part of the tapestry of life. So the gate 36 line six is really cool line in that I'm looking forward to this because it is saying that eventually the powers of darkness will be vanquished. And the key phrase says, the knowledge and attendant faith that the powers of darkness eventually destroy themselves. Those whom the gods wish to destroy, they first make mad. The correctness of crisis when it arises out of pure feelings. So in other words, it says that maybe things were chaotic and maybe we saw a lot of things getting really in crisis as the first part of the year happened. And then we're starting to see that there is a solution to this and that the darkness or the powers that have been working against humanity trying to bring us down are going to be kind of muted or brought down a couple notches. I really liken this to the part in the movie where if you're watching a movie and you have a lot of the bad guys and they seem to keep getting things or getting ahead and you think, okay, well, now is a time where these guys need to start losing and the good guys, you know, and I always say that in quotations, start winning. And this is kind of the point at which the good guys potentially are going to start winning or even for yourself where things are starting to move in the direction that you really want it to move. And it's almost like you have a bit of wind in your sails and it's allowing you to move forward and to do the things you want to do to get the experience you need so that as you move on, you're becoming stronger, more resilient, and more confident in where you're going in your future. And one date of note, and that is from February 6th to the 23rd, we will have the full 
35, 36 channel being activated between Mars and Neptune. And when I said that we have these illuminations or these moments of time when we might be able to see beyond the veil and to actually really know what's happening beneath the scene or the crisis or chaos, the things that we need to fix in our lives, and we have an opportunity to actually see it happen. Well, this could be an opportunity where you start to see where there's places in your life that in your life that need to be fixed, the cracks in the foundation, and you can start to fix the parts of the li your life that maybe are not going the way they're supposed to. And now you have the intel and the tools you need to move forward. Of course, there'll be other times when this can happen. And that will be when the sun or the earth are in the gate 35. And that'll be happening two times a year. And Venus and Mercury will also go through the energy at some point in the year as well. And if you want to check out my community page, I always give you a heads up on the transits and how they're playing out every week. And I do a daily post. Well, that's it for the year ahead. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're still with me, thanks for coming along for the ride. And I will be back again as year progresses to talk about different transits, eclipses, Mercury retrograde, Venus retrograde, and the new and full moons. But until then, take care and I will see you again soon. Bye for now.